Welcome to the AI for Us 2 channel, your source for the latest AI generated news on XRP, crypto, and precious metals. Our 100% AI generated news content is based on real time events and uploaded up to four times a day. Stay ahead of the curve and subscribe to our channel to experience the cutting edge of news reporting. Check out our recently uploaded videos to stay fully informed. AI XRP New News Updates In a significant blow to the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, a federal judge has decided that the SEC cannot seal the documents associated with William Hinman's 2018 speech on cryptocurrency and securities. This speech has played a crucial role in the ongoing lawsuit against Ripple, as it features Hinman's statement that he did not consider Ether to be a security. District Judge Annalisa Torres, presiding over the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York, affirmed an earlier ruling by Magistrate Judge Sarah Netburn in January 2022, ordering that the documents be handed over to Ripple as part of the discovery process. Ripple had requested certain redactions in the legal proceedings, encompassing contractual agreements, financial details, and various other types of information. Judge Torres has granted many of these proposed redactions, concurring with Ripple's argument that they are specific and pertinent. Notably, this includes redactions pertaining to the company's financial statements and select business information. However, the judge also determined that some of the proposed redactions, particularly those related to XRP, were overly broad. Among the contested redactions were references connecting Ripple's revenues with XRP sales. The defendants also sought to redact information concerning the compensation Ripple offered to trading platforms for listing XRP, as well as details about the targeted sales of XRP to investors through programmatic and institutional channels. Judge Torres considered these redactions excessive and lacking justification. Judge Torres' ruling represents a setback for the SEC in its ongoing legal battle against Ripple. By denying the sealing of the Hinman speech documents, the judge highlights the significance of transparency and public access to relevant information within the judicial process. Simultaneously, while permitting specific redactions proposed by Ripple, the judge ensures that they are appropriately limited and focused, aiming to safeguard sensitive business information. The outcome of this ruling carries implications for both the SEC and Ripple as they navigate the lawsuit. It establishes a precedent for the disclosure of documents connected to significant speeches made by SEC officials, potentially influencing the regulation of cryptocurrencies more broadly. The dispute surrounding redactions underscores the need for a delicate balance between transparency and the protection of legitimate business interests. As the legal proceedings unfold, the handling of sensitive information will remain a critical consideration, with the court striving to uphold fairness and transparency throughout the process. In summary, the SEC's attempt to seal documents related to William Hinman's 2018 speech in the ongoing Ripple lawsuit has been rejected by Judge Torres. The judge ruled that these documents, known as the Hinman speech documents, hold relevance in the judicial process and should not be sealed. While certain redactions proposed by Ripple have been allowed, others have been deemed excessive and unwarranted by the judge. This ruling underscores the importance of transparency and public access to information while recognizing the need to protect sensitive business data. As the legal battle between the SEC and Ripple progresses, the handling of documents and redactions will continue to shape the proceedings, potentially impacting the regulatory landscape of cryptocurrencies. AI XRP New News Updates In a recent critique of the Securities and Exchange Commission SEC, John Deaton, a prominent lawyer specializing in cryptocurrencies and representing XRP holders, expressed his concerns regarding the agency's functionality and integrity. Deaton took to Twitter to convey his belief that the commission, as an institution, is indefensible and has become a broken agency that no longer fulfills its fundamental mission. Deaton's criticism arises from his perception of the SEC's mishandling of the cryptocurrency market. He expressed disappointment with the agency's reliance on decades-old cases in its legal arguments, asserting that this approach fails to provide adequate guidance and clarity to the ever-evolving market. Additionally, Deaton highlighted significant events that, in his opinion, should have influenced the SEC's perspective on digital assets. For instance, in 2018, the agency publicly disclosed a speech by William Hinman, which outlined the SEC's stance on cryptocurrencies. Furthermore, in 2019, the regulator issued a framework for investment contracts, 
stating that a virtual currency used for payments and as a fiat substitute was unlikely to be classified as a security under the Howey test. Deaton underscored the fact that XRP had already been recognized as a virtual currency by multiple governmental bodies. He also referred to statements made by former SEC Chairman Clayton, who supported Hinman's viewpoint. These factors, according to Deaton, raised doubts about the regulator's recent actions concerning XRP. The SEC plays a crucial role in regulating the rapidly expanding crypto industry. Consequently, Deaton's remarks emphasize the need for a comprehensive evaluation of the agency's practices and policies to ensure they align with the dynamic nature of the digital asset landscape. As calls for reform gain momentum, the debate surrounding the effectiveness of the SEC and its impact on the crypto market is likely to intensify in the months ahead. AIXRP New News Updates Flair, FLR, the platform associated with XRP, has announced a new batch of airdrop tokens available for claim. The latest drop, named Flairdrop.03, is accessible to all holders of wrapped FLR, WFLR. The airdrop initiative began on January 9, targeting XRP holders who took part in the December 12, 2020, snapshot. In the initial distribution phase, approximately 4.279 billion FLAIR FLR, tokens were distributed to millions of recipients, including users on various platforms such as Binance, OKX, Kraken, Bithum, Upbit, KuCoin, and BitBank. During the airdrop, participants received 1.0073 FLR per XRP held with 15% of the total supply released to the community at that time. Subsequently, Flare introduced a series of 36 monthly Flare drops, amounting to 24.2 billion FLR in total, which can be claimed by recipients who have wrapped their Flare tokens. The distribution consists of 35 monthly batches, each containing 676,040,637 FLR, with a final distribution of 584,760,871 FLR scheduled for the 36th month. The distribution process commenced on March 17, 2023, and recipients can claim their tokens every 30 days thereafter. Notably, Flare recently introduced an auto-claiming feature that allows for the automatic claiming of Flare tokens without requiring user input. In other news, the XRP ledger has reached a significant milestone in the realm of non-fungible tokens (NFTs). Six months ago, the XLS20 proposal was implemented on the XRP ledger's mainnet, enabling native NFT functionality. Ripple X reports that over 1.3 million NFTs have been minted since the launch with more than 740,000 offers to purchase NFTs accepted. These figures have positioned the XRP ledger among the top 10 blockchains in terms of NFT sales volume and transactions. Furthermore, there are now over 5,000 issuers, and numerous NFT collections spanning various use cases, including events and ticketing, music and IP access rights, the metaverse, loyalty rewards, and real estate, among others. AI XRP New News Updates Michael Arrington, the founder of TechCrunch and Crunch Fund, recently expressed his criticism of the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission (SEC) for allegedly disapproving of Ripple's efforts to democratize XRP trading. During an episode of the Leia Halpern Show podcast, Arrington suggested that the SEC's actions against Ripple were driven by their dissatisfaction with Ripple's decision to make XRP trading accessible to all, regardless of their economic status. Arrington speculated that the SEC may be pursuing legal action against Ripple in order to secure a significant victory, although he acknowledged that this was purely speculative. The SEC had previously filed a lawsuit against Ripple Labs, Inc. and two of its executives on December 22, 2020, alleging that they conducted an unregistered digital asset securities offering, raising over $1.3 billion. Brad Garlinghouse, CEO of Ripple, has expressed optimism that the case will be resolved soon, anticipating its conclusion before the end of the third quarter of the year. Arrington, however, believes that the SEC has a desire to see Ripple's demise as a notable achievement. According to Arrington, the distinction of whether XRP is a security or not is irrelevant. He emphasized that the key issue at hand is whether the trading of an asset is limited to the wealthy or open to everyone. Arrington criticized the government's perpetuation of a system where individuals with limited capital are deemed incapable of making sound financial decisions, 
resulting in missed investment opportunities in companies like Uber, Airbnb, and Pinterest. Arrington argued against the SEC's condescending stance, stating that presuming lower-income individuals lack the ability to make the same investment decisions as wealthier individuals is not only patronizing, but also fundamentally unjust. He believes that the focus of regulation should be on preventing fraud rather than restricting the financial autonomy of individuals based on their wealth. Arrington contended that every investor should have the freedom to trade and invest in XRP. In the past, Arrington has questioned the SEC's lawsuit against Ripple, particularly the relevance of the Howey test in the digital age. The Howey test determines whether a transaction qualifies as an investment contract, with one of its criteria being that investors expect profits solely from the efforts of others. Arrington argued that the test is outdated and no longer applicable in today's digital landscape. AI XRP New News Updates John Deaton has stated that the SEC Ripple case poses a significant threat to the entire cryptocurrency community. Deaton's concerns were prompted by Perianne Boring's revelations that the case could set a legal precedent with implications for many companies in the capital markets. Deaton emphasized that the Section 4 exemptions, which are cited by some to defend against allegations of securities violations, only apply to securities. In a series of Twitter threads, Deaton highlighted the intentional noise and distraction he believes the SEC included in its allegations against Ripple. He has been actively advocating his position that the regulators are not solely targeting Ripple, but rather the entire crypto industry. Deaton recalled his efforts to convince others that secondary sales were implicated and considered securities in the Ripple case, even engaging in debates with individuals who believed the SEC's allegations were limited to Ripple's sales of XRP. He disagreed with those who characterized his concerns as overblown, pointing out that the Section 4 exemption specifically pertained to securities. Referring to the definition of underwriter, Deaton argued that the Section 4 exemption does not apply since an underwriter is defined as a person who purchases securities from an issuer with the intention of distributing them. This contradicts the notion that the exemption could be used to defend against allegations related to secondary sales. Throughout the Ripple case, Deaton has been critical of the SEC's allegations against Ripple. He recently highlighted what he perceives as the SEC's schizophrenic defense in the case. AI XRP New News Updates Bitcoin maximalist Max Kaiser recently expressed support for SEC Chairman Gary Gensler's statements during a question-and-answer session conducted by the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta. Kaiser took to Twitter, agreeing with Gensler's classification of all cryptocurrencies other than Bitcoin as securities, which includes XRP and ETH. He mentioned that El Salvador has embraced Bitcoin as its national currency, allowing no other cryptocurrencies, and invited Gensler to visit and witness how the country has become a leading Bitcoin nation. In terms of regulatory clarity for cryptocurrencies, Gensler believes that existing securities regulations already apply to all cryptocurrencies since he considers them securities. This viewpoint has been met with criticism from Coinbase, which filed a lawsuit against the SEC, seeking clear rules for regulating crypto assets and their trading on digital exchanges. The SEC, in response, argued that the rules for traditional securities already cover cryptocurrencies, but blockchain companies and crypto exchanges prefer not to comply with them. The SEC also urged a federal judge to dismiss Coinbase's request for a faster clarification of crypto asset regulations, considering it unfounded. The SEC's actions have extended to other US-based crypto exchanges as well. Coinbase received a Wells notice from the regulatory agency regarding its staking services and crypto asset listings. Kraken, another US-based exchange, faced SEC scrutiny over its crypto staking service, with the agency alleging harm to investors. Consequently, Bittrex made the decision to shut down its US branch, citing the lack of government interest in innovation and the absence of clear regulatory guidelines for cryptocurrencies. They will now focus on supporting Bittrex Global instead. In addition to these developments, the SEC continues its ongoing lawsuit against Ripple Labs, initiated in December 2020. The SEC alleges that Ripple, its co-founder Chris Larson, and CEO Brad Garlinghouse illegally sold millions of XRP tokens as unregistered securities, generating nearly $2 billion in revenue. AI XRP New News Updates John E. Deaton has raised concerns about the dangers hidden within the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission's SEC case against Ripple. 
Deaton urged readers to carefully analyze the SEC's complaint, ignoring any intentional distractions, in order to identify the underlying threats to the crypto industry. Despite spending a year trying to persuade others that the SEC's charges against Ripple included XRP secondary market transactions as securities, Deaton faced opposition from many individuals who believed the focus was solely on securities related to Ripple's XRP sales. Even some of the SEC's own legal representatives dismissed Deaton's concerns as exaggerated. Deaton revealed that certain SEC lawyers claimed the Section 4 exemption would be applied to XRP secondary market transactions. However, he clarified that this exemption clause does not extend to secondary transactions, highlighting the intricacies of Section 4 of the Securities Act. It's important to note that Deaton's perspective may be biased due to his role as a cryptocurrency advocate and lawyer for XRP holders. Interpretations of the Section 4 exemption and its applicability to XRP secondary market transactions may vary within the legal community. Additionally, Deaton's filing of an amicus brief on behalf of XRP investors could be seen as an effort to protect his clients' interests. Nevertheless, Deaton's comments carry significance within the Ripple community and the wider cryptosphere. By drawing attention to the potential threats posed by the SEC's case against Ripple and shedding light on the implications for XRP secondary market transactions, Deaton's insights serve as a warning signal for crypto enthusiasts. AI XRP New News Updates John Butler, Investment Director at Southbank Investment Research, has expressed concerns about the introduction of central bank digital currencies CBDCs, stating that they could lead to the end of financial privacy and anonymity. According to Butler, the move towards CBDCs could be alarming as it would require individuals to hand over their financial privacy to a central organization. CBDCs are programmable digital tokens issued and controlled by central banks. While proponents argue that CBDCs can improve financial inclusion and efficiency, while reducing issues like bank runs and money laundering, critics like Butler warn about the potential for surveillance and control. Butler believes that CBDCs could have dystopian implications, such as restricting access to funds for political dissidents or being used for social engineering. He suggests that caution is necessary and that people should be wary of the direction in which CBDCs are taking us. Butler also points out that CBDCs could potentially be implemented during a banking crisis, as regulators might use such situations to transition fully to CBDCs and eliminate the risks associated with traditional banking. He argues that CBDCs could make bank runs impossible because monetary authorities can prevent depositors from withdrawing their money. To protect against the risks associated with CBDCs, Butler recommends holding precious metals like gold and silver. He believes that gold, in particular, has historically provided a positive rate of return during times of low or negative interest rates, making it an attractive store of value in a world where CBDCs are prevalent. Additionally, Butler suggests that investing in equities that generate reliable cash flow, especially through dividends, can be a good strategy to combat inflation. He advises investing in companies that have the ability to increase prices and dividends alongside inflation. It's important to note that these views reflect Butler's perspective, and opinions on CBDCs and investment strategies may vary within the financial community. AI XRP New News Updates The gold market experienced a decline of nearly $30 as investors awaited news on U.S. debt ceiling negotiations. U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen warned that a U.S. default would have catastrophic consequences, including a severe economic downturn, high unemployment rates, and a significant decline in the stock market. Yellen emphasized that a default would crack the foundations of the financial system and could lead to worldwide panic and financial market disruptions. Yellen indicated that the Treasury could run out of cash by June 1 and highlighted the increasing borrowing costs for securities maturing in early June. However, no progress has been made between U.S. President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, as Republicans demand spending cuts as a condition for raising the debt cap, which Democrats oppose. Investors are turning to gold as a hedge against a potential default, with Bloomberg's Markets Live Pulse survey showing that over half of the respondents chose gold as protection against the debt ceiling turmoil. A Gallup survey also revealed that Americans' approval of gold as a long-term investment has nearly doubled from the previous year. ANZ Bank expects gold ETF demand to turn positive for the rest of the year, driven by economic uncertainty and safe haven demand. 
The bank predicts gold to reach $2,100 per ounce by the end of this year and $2,200 in the second half of next year. While gold prices temporarily fell below $2,000 per ounce, analysts anticipate a recovery and believe that gold will maintain its levels above $2,000 due to the ongoing debt ceiling issue. A potential U.S. debt default could have negative repercussions for the economy, potentially leading to further monetary policy easing and making gold an attractive non-interest-bearing investment. This completes the AIXRP New News Updates video. If you found this information helpful, please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video for more updates and insights into crypto and finance.